what happens with the compares too so please understand it will start checking the character by character when i have two things concatenation is adding two things index of is to get the first occurrence of the substring last index of is to get the last occurrence of that substring Hello everyone I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on manipulating strings so guys even this topic is very very simple for all of you because you have studied this concept in C programming language so guys without wasting much of your time let me take you to the session so in this session I will be discussing how exactly I can create the string and also I how exactly the string methods are working for me and what are the different methods that I have along with that how do i compare an array of strings and also the last topic regular expressions all these things i will be discussing it with respect to the strings with all of you so without wasting much of your time let me start the session for all of you so guys the first topic it's all about manipulating strings what exactly strings is all about a group of characters say for example i have uh, kaushik let me just write kaushik oh cool so can i call it as a group of characters yes of course you can call it as a group of characters which is enclosed between the quotes so this is what i will call it as a string so that's what you need to remember with respect to the string so fine you understood what is string so you need to understand one more thing in c# hash, you can use string as a array of characters array of characters in the sense what i will be storing my string in the array so that's what you need to observe here k o u s h i and k so this is how i will be storing my string in the array that's what you need to observe here so i'm trying to store the array of characters array of characters is also treated as a string in c# hash is what you need to remember so fine then how do i create the string is a question for us i have five different methods to create the string the first one that i have here is assigning a string literal if i take a string object so i will be assigning a string literal so by this i can also create the string so that is the first method so fine how exactly we are doing that i will discuss that in the next slide so fine and also i will be copying from one object to another object from this also you can create the string so fine copying from one string object to another string object so fine and then next one is concatenating two object concatenation in the sense joining two string objects by joining two string objects i will be able to create the string that's what you need to observe here hi right. fine then i have reading from the keyboard so reading from the keyboard in the sense what so user will be entering the string so from there i will be reading the input and that input can also be a string so that is the fourth method that i have and also using this two string any data you enter i will convert that as a string so how do i convert so with the help of the two string method that's what you need to remember so this is the five different methods that i have in c# hash to create the string so sir can you please explain with an example for all this yes so make a note of all the methods that i have the first one as i told you assigning a string literal so first of all observe here i am using the data type so when it comes to the c# hash, i should not call it as a data type so you should treat this as a class so fine what is the class here that you are using you are using the string class so for this string i am creating s1 as a object so fine s1 as a object so in other words so i'm just creating a variable s1 of type string so that's how you you guys used to understand but actually so string is a class for this class i'm creating the object so why are you calling it as object because when it comes to the c# hash, i treat everything as a classes and objects that's the most important point that you need to remember so fine i have created the object now what is the title assigning the string literal any value which i'm storing that is what i will call it as a literal so fine what is the value here abc which is in the quotes so you need to observe so this abc is a string which is enclosed between the quotes it's a collection of characters that i have it's a group of characters so this is what i will call it as a string which i am storing it in the object which i have already created so this is how i will be creating the string that's the first method that i have what is the second method observe the second method so guys copying the string so i have stored the content so observe here 
S1 contains what? S1 contains within the coach A, B, C. Okay. From S1, I will copy to one more object. How do I copy? So fine, I have to create the object first. That is S2. Okay. So fine, observe here. So from S1, S1 as what? So within double quotes, I have A, B, C in S1, right? In the previous slide. So that is what I'm copying it to S2. This is one of the method to copy, which I'm using the assignment operator. I have one more method that is copy method. So this is a predefined, this is a predefined function that I have string dot copy. So what is that you want to copy? S1. So to which object you want to copy? S2. So this is how you can copy. So this is two different methods that I have to copy the content of the string. Moving forward to the next one, concatenation. Concatenation this is adding two things. For say for example, I have uh, uh, S1 plus S2. Say for example, S1 has got high. Okay. So this is what I have in the S1. So I have S2. So everyone, okay, is what I have stored in S2. So what happens when it comes to S1 plus S2? What will I have in S3 if I write S1 plus S2? Can you all guess? Yes, of course, it's nothing but within a quote. Hi, everyone. Okay, hi, everyone will be my output if I perform the concatenation. Concatenation, since you are adding two strings, that's what I will call it as a concatenation. This is one method of doing it. So another method is by using concat is a predefined function which I'm having in the strings. Okay, so fine, you will use string dot concat for that you will pass s1 comma s2. This is what you need to remember. So to perform the concatenation of string. The third, the next method that we have, the fourth one, okay, reading from the keyboard. How do I read from the keyboard? So guys, observe, this is very, very important. So console dot read line. So read line is a function or the method that I have, which enables us to enter some value and then we will be storing whatever the value that we are receiving from the user that I am going to store in the object that is yes. This is how I will be reading the values from the user. If you want to read any you know, string values from the user, so this is how I will be doing it and I will be storing it in the S. Yes. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the fourth method. The last one, whatever you have. So guys, so I will be converting that into string. Say for example, I have number. I need to convert that number. Say I have one, two, three. I need to convert this one, two, three. Okay. So one, two, three is of what type? So one, two, three is of integer type. Observe here, I've created the data type. Okay. So here I have the variable called number. What is the name of the variable? Number. Number is of what type? Number is of integer type. So what I can store inside this variable? Obviously integer. Now here, what is that I'm trying to do? Number is of type integer. So dot to string. What is the meaning of it? So I'm converting the number of type integer to string. So that's what you need to observe. So finally, in num string, what I will have? I will have the data which is in the form of string. That's what you need to remember. This is how I will be converting the values into string. This is how I'll be creating the strings. Five different methods is what you need to remember. So fine. Moving forward, there is a string called verbatim string. Verbatim in the sense, same as it is. I want to print it as it is. So whenever you use at, okay, so you'll be printing it as it is, however we have. So even though you are using the escaping sequence, escaping sequence in the sense what? You will have slash and slash t. will come across with all these things, right? Slash in the sense, it will go to new line. Slash t in the sense, you will go to the next tab. So all those things will be ignored and it will be printing it as it is. So if you want to print it as it is, though you have the escaping sequence, you will be using at the rate in the beginning. That's what you need to remember with respect to the verbatim strings. Moving forward to the a very important part of the presentation. So guys, what exactly I have here? Some of the predefined methods that I have, which I will be dealing with the strings. So what are the predefined methods that I have? So guys, I have compare. So this comparison method is used to compare two different strings. The next one that I have is compare to. Guys, what happens with the compares to? So please understand, it will start checking the character by character when I have two strings. That's what you need to remember with respect to the compares to. What exactly the next method that I have concat. So concat in the sense concatenation, joining two strings. That is what we have seen. 
right in the previous slide concatenation in the sense what joining two strings that is what i can do it again i have one more method that is copy copying the content of one string to another string can be done with the help of copy method and then observe here you need to understand the difference between the copy and copy to copy to is what i'm copying the content of one string object to another string object but here when it comes to the copy to i'm copying the specified number of characters to an array not string object that's what you need to observe here all right so fine moving forward ends with so what exactly ends with so it determines whether a substring exists at the end of the string or not i will pass the parameter as a substring so i am just checking whether this substring which i am passing as a parameter to this method is existing at the end of the string or not say for example i have the string as beautiful okay so in that i'm passing here fuel okay so i'm just checking do i have this fuel at the end of the string or not so that's what i will check with the ends with and the next one is a equals it's all very simple the name itself says that whether two strings are equal or not and then the next one that i have is index of so guys it returns the position of the first occurrence of the substring what is the meaning of it say for example for this index of say for example i'll write like this index of okay i'll pass some substring here say for example uh, f u l for the beautiful okay so where exactly uh, what is the index of this substring so in that you need to remember one more thing first occurrence so first where exactly it is coming what is the index of this substring in the string is what i will be returning from this method is what you need to remember so fine insert is a method which will help me to return the new string as say for example i need to insert a substring to a string so i will be using this insert method that's what you need to observe fine what is the next one that we have uh, it's very simple join join in the sense it joins an array of strings together okay so last index of what exactly last index of so returns the position of the last occurrence of that particular substring so there is a difference between last index of and then index of index of is to get the first occurrence of the substring last index of is to get the last occurrence of that substring that's the most important difference that you need to remember so fine i have a pad left and pad right why do we need pad left and pad right so it helps me to align the string to the left and right respectively that's what you need to remember and then remove delete the characters from the string whatever you pass it as a argument so you it will delete that particular character from the string so that's our use of uh, remove and the replace it will just replace the character in the string and then split so it divides the string so that's our most important thing that you need to remember for in this class so by saying this i've come to an end of the session so in tomorrow's class i'll show you how exactly i will be implementing this methods with the program so till then take care of your health bye bye